This is a bear that fly with the computer AI. And this is a car that drive by computer AI. But how these things works? This thing works with a system that is called neural network. In the case of the bird, we put four information into the neural network that is contain the Y position of the flappy bird, the X coordinate of the tube, and the Y coordinate of the first gap and the second gap. And after we give the neural network this information, we get an output. The output is between zero and one, and if the output is greater than half, we say jump and if the output is less than half we say okay don't jump so the question is that how we should train our network to find the best weights and biases to jump at the moment that we need to and don't jump at the moment that we don't need so there are multiple ways that we can train our network one of them is back propagation which i uh, explained in previous videos but back propagation does not work with the games because for back propagation you need a set of data which is answer which we does not have in game so what we use for train our neural network in games we use a genetic algorithm to train our neural network in games let's see how to do it so we are going to talk about neural network and genetic algorithm okay this is a very simple neural, neural network system it has uh, four input one output and there are a lot of uh, weights and biases and there are infinite number of possibility for these weights and biases and out of those infinite number of uh, possibility for ways of biases, there is a set of ways and biases that is going to behave good. Let me show you with an example. Imagine that we have only two ways. I know even for the most simplest uh, neural network system, we have uh, weights and biases, a lot of them. But imagine now we have two ways because this way I can show you in the 2D coordinate system. Even for the two weights, we have a lot of possibility. Okay. For example, they, have, they can have the value of 1, 1, 1, 2. There are infinite number of uh, possibility even for the two weights. Now, let's imagine that our answer is here. Okay. Our answer is here. But we cannot see that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose a random neural network. Okay, this is my random neural network. And as you can see, it is not even close to my answer. And if I choose 100 random neural network, even 1 millions of random neural network, I'm not going to arrive to the answer. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, choose a lot of random neural network and I will say which neural network uh, acting better. And if I look at here, I will say, okay, these three neural network which are closer to the answer acting better actually. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all of this neural network and I'm just going to keep these two, three neural network that acting better. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the value, the weights, uh, a little bit, okay? And I'm going to create other neural networks, like this. And as you can see, now we have four neural network that is going to act even better. And I'm going to repeat this process, and eventually I'm going to arrive to the answer. So this is the idea for uh, neural network and genetic algorithm. So let me sh show you a real world example. So in, in the example of the flappy bird, I will see which flappy bird is going to act better or pass through these tubes. And I would say, let's take that flappy bird and create other flappy bird based on that flappy bird. And let's repeat this process. Okay, so let's take a look at this neural network uh, system. Uh, it has three input, one output, and let's take a look at this layer. This layer has, uh, has nine weights and it has three uh, biases. I will show these nine weights as a three by three matrix and I will show its biases like this, B1, B2 and B3. All right. So what I want to do, I want to mutate its weights and biases. Okay. So what does it mean mutate? Mutation means I will take its weights and I would add a random number to that. But the question is that, 
Should I mutate all of nine weights? No. It's better to mutate only maybe three of them. Okay, not all of them. So now I want to introduce to you a variable that is called mutation rate. So mutation rate determines how many of the weights and biases I want to, to mutate. In this case, I put it 0.3. That means I, wa I want only to mutate 30% of our weights and biases. Another question that I should ask is how much should I add to this number? Should I choose a random number between 1 and minus 1? Or should I choose a random number between 10 and minus 10? Okay. And this is determined by another variable that is called the mutation power. So mutation power in this case is 5. It means that I will add a random number between 5 and minus 5. Okay. There is another process that is called crossover. In that case, I take uh, two of my best uh, neural network. Okay, this is one of them and this is another one. And I create based of these two uh, weights, another weight that it took the, the first section of it from this neural network and the second section of it from this neural network. And should I cross over all of my neural networks? No, we only cross over uh, some of them and this is determined by another variable that is called crossover rates. And that means uh, that we are going to cross over 40% of new neural network that we are going to create. Okay, so all of the work of choosing the best networks and removing uh, the worst networks uh, and crossovering them and mutation, mutating them is done by a class that is called population class. So population class is going to cross over, mutate, and uh, create the new generation out of the best network that we have. So what we should give to the population class, the most important property of the population class that we should determine are mutation rates that I told you, mutation power, and crossover rate, and the most important one is uh, we should uh, determine the fitness of each network. So fitness is a variable in each network that shows how good that network is acting. So if, the, if a network has a high fitness, that means it's better than other. And this is the work that we should do in our game. And we need to write that very good. So let me show you. In, in the example that I showed you, uh, uh, as you can see, there are three neural networks that are close to the answer. If I can't say that these three networks are close to the answer, I cannot uh, actually arrive to the answer but by uh, creating new neural network and creating new generation. So each neural network is acting better. Which one of them? All right, and I will do it through a variable inside the neural network that is called fitness. So fitness, let me show you an example. For example, in the example of the flappy belt, what do you think we should put as a fitness of the neural network? So I would say time that the bird is arrived. Okay, that is working, but this fitness uh, function also has a little problem that I will show you. So imagine that we have three bears that they have arrived at this point. The upper bear is going to collide with the tube and it's going to die. Also, this the middle bear is going to collide and it's going to pass here. Okay, it's going to pass here and it's going to collide here and it's going to die. And the bottom bear also is going to collide here and it's going to die. If I would say that the fitness is the time that each bird is alive. This bird in the middle, maybe it's different from other only half of second. And that is not going to work well, okay? Because the population class is not going to see a big difference between them. But we know, we know that there is a lot of difference between this bird at the middle and this bird and this bird. 
because this belt as middle at least fly between the gaps. So what we are going to do, we are going to add a scar uh, as soon as this bird pass this uh, tube, we are going to add a scar to it. And our fitness should be time alive plus a scar. And this is much better fitness function for our flappy bird game. Uh, and I'm going to create a flappy bird game uh, in the next video also. So, the situation is all, not always like this simple because in complex system, we don't have only one answer. Sometimes we have a lot of other answers. So let me show you. This is a, this is a function, okay? This is a complex function. And you can see at each minimum, there is an answer, all right? At each minimum, there is an answer. This is the answer, and this is the answer, and this is the answer. Okay, imagine that we start our game and uh, we find an answer here. This way, we find an answer here. It is a character that is going to act good, but not enough good, okay? It's, it's not the best solution, I, I can say. So if I mutate and cross over this, uh, this neural network, what I'm going to see, it's going to arrive at this point and this point. But these are not going to act better than this, okay? This, these are going to be removed in the next generation because they are not good enough. This is better. But you know, we know the best answer is here. This is the problem that you should be aware of. Okay, sometimes you create your population, you create everything, you arrive at an answer, but it's not the best answer. But what you can do, you can uh, run this process multiple times and hope one time that our character has the best solution. Okay, this just was the, an introduction to the neural network genetic algorithm. And I, in next video, I'm going to create a flappy bird. And after that, I'm going to create a flappy bird that is going to fly between these tubes. Have a good time. Bye.